Okay, <coughs> any comments, any questions you'll have for Pastor Benny also, so that he can come up and answer. <laughs> Any <clears throat> any comments you'll have? <clears throat> Pastor Brian, uh, thank you for the message. Pastor Brian, I have a question. Uh, in First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse ten, it says, "But." When that which is perfect is come, then that which is not that then which uh, which is in part shall be done away. Just want to check uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse ten. It says, "But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away." Does this perfect means uh, the word of God? Uh, the written word of God. Context. The context there is. In relation, the context is in relationship to the gifts of the spirit. That which is uh, knowledge, we know in part, we prophesy in part, right? But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. Now, what is that which is perfect? So, if you say that. Some people say it is the full canon of scripture, right? But I, 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 that means if it is the full canon of scripture, then we are saying that we would know more than the apostles. That's what Ryrie says here and his. But some people, but most of the opinion that the perfect is Christ. When the perfect comes, that means Christ, when he comes, everything that is partial will be done away. Now we know in part, we prophesy in part, when the perfect comes, yeah, when Christ comes back in the second advent, when Christ comes, then the partial will be done away with. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, when the perfect comes. But some people s believe that it is the full canon of scripture, but some say it is the second coming of Christ. Meaning when Christ comes, everything will be fully known. You can draw many applications from it. You know, we can draw many applications because the context is in relationship to maturity. When I was, then it says here, when I was a child, I used to think like a child, reason like it. When I became a man, I did away with what? Childish things. Now we know, now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I will fully, I will know fully, just I have also been. When is that? When we stand before God face to face. Anything else regarding the word of God, the messages you'll have heard also? Anything regarding the <coughs> Pastor <coughs> the it was a great great message also about how 
the word when we <coughs> when we allow it to criticize us and we accept the precepts of it then <coughs> we can <coughs> be governed to live in our calling also and uh, sometimes we don't allow it to criticize us we just want <coughs> the 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 simple and the 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 messages that are lovey dovey sort of <laughs> that are that are very visitor friendly messages and we don't allow it to criticize us and to discriminate us also as pastor brian was saying and that was a good point and how the the context of this uh, theme we have brought it out that god wants us to be prepared to be a soldier to face the devil and an athlete to rule our body the lusts of our body and also the farmer who's making an impact in other people's lives also so it's all by the word of god and especially the good point is that we are standing in grace and grace can make us these things so that was really a significant portion and just one question also that uh, said it's possible that the word of god we can we can be deceived by the word of god how can we allow the word of god to deceive us the pharisees were perfect examples of deceiving people through the word in in matthew chapter 15 uh one way by which it can happen is if i privately interpret the word i mean the word of god cannot deceive me in that sense pastor benny said it is absolute but i can privately interpret the word of god correct whenever someone is brought to a place of conviction by the holy spirit and they choose not to repent they will say that is your way of interpreting the word of god <laughs> i've always thought that was very interesting because i am not the one that is trying to tell you you're wrong the 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 word is the word has in now this is number one the word has inherent power you know the word has inherent power the words i speak to you they are spirit and life there is inherent power in the word i don't you i don't need anybody else to come and force that upon me the word has inherent power so now uh i have it somewhere in, in james 21 21 the word is para logizomai what is it in hebrew chapter 12 what is the word there it is the word analogizomai now look at it in hebrews in in james 1 if he who is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the work he the word has inherent power and yet the word is not able to deliver the person number 1 there is definition first that god gives me before he calls me into an act of determination he must give me definition nobody is called into an act of determination unless he is first given determination definition man was given definition before he was called to make any decision before god he was given definition the act of determination only defines what one thinks of the definition that god has given now think about this if my affection towards god and my love for god 
is detached from I mean sorry if God's love for me as an individual person is detached from God's demand of me if God's love for me is somehow detached or in I say that if the if the word of his grace is detached from the word of God then I will basically be standing on ground that is legal and not standing on ground that is gracious the purpose of the enemy is to get me to step outside of a ground that is legal uh, sorry gracious and get me to be established on a ground that is legal if I am if I set my foot upon ground that is legal I do not have to I do not have to worry about being condemned because I am condemned already that is why the Apostle Paul starts in 2nd Timothy 2 1 with be a good soldier endure hardship no he says be strong in the grace and dunamai I have all the verses here I didn't get a chance but we may be to be endued with right now you know in the old days if you had a TVS 50 was awesome today you see these guys on their 350 450 500 and you know like they like to rev and then the Harley Davidson's and the triumphs and all are all out imagine a guy with a 50 CC TVS is going and this 350 400 guy wants to show off in front of the poor t 50 guy and he just does all his stuff does the wheelie and all and then he goes and bangs someone out there yeah. God is like you know, he knows how much of CC I have so what God does is somewhere down the road he kind of like you know he reduces the CC in my life because he wants to replace the CC with dunamis with energia with kratos with iskas these are words for power so he has to do something in my life as a believer therefore this word paralogizomai is very interesting but, it, but look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3 what does it say What does it say? It is the word analogizomai. Jesus Christ, it says for us, consider him that endured the hostility, antilogia. Anti is a substitution or instead of, logia is the word of sinners against himself. Consider him. I mean, in the humanity of Christ, Christ had to endure a lot of things. when we are encountering situations in our personal lives we cannot afford to live in paralogizomai which means what para alongside logizomai to take into account that means we don't seek to interpret wo the word through human reason we need to have that illuminated to us by the Holy Spirit to seek to have the word interpreted to us by human reason is to only be a hearer and never be a doer to seek to be illuminated by the Spirit takes me from being a hearer to an effectual doer to a place where I will be blessed as a person so so it says here in chapter 12 after the first two verses consider him who endured such hostility of sinners against himself so that you would not what throw in the towel there is a kind of hostility that you and I will face in the world they come from three sources 
they come from the atmosphere they come from our flesh the flesh is not it's hostile towards the spirit galatians 5:17 and it comes from the system on the, it comes from the world on the outside the believer cannot at any point of time make a truce with satan the world and the flesh he cannot be at any point of time in agreement with these three things therefore there will be a consistent sense of hostility that he will face against these three foes if he does not understand analogizomai he will allow himself to be counseled by paralogizomai which means i as a believer conform to the ministry in my outward appearance and behavior i am doing everything correct but there is nothing that is taking place in the human heart when jesus christ came he said you worship me with your lips you hear you worship me everything is correct but your heart is far away from me you know it's a trap that you and i can get into pastor benny said yesterday you know what that trap is i am taken from the privilege of being a person who is a worshipper before god in the spirit now i basically become a worker to religion works is the fruit of faith understand works is the fruit of faith work does not precede faith it is the fruit of faith good works in titus 3:8 and ephesians 2:10 are ordained by god for us that is the fruit of faith with our lives but if there is paralogizomai going in this is i or i would say i would say that is what past that is the way pastor john interprets the word of god see now in now this is it when i say that i go into the world and what happens to me in hebrews 12 3 what happens to me i am not able to overcome the hostility that's there because paralogizomai does not empower me to overcome the hostility in the world analogizomai empowers me the word ana is the word again it's also the word above so i take into account and i ponder upon the things that are coming from above consider him when christ came into the world he made sure that everything that he encountered on a human level had to be addressed from the viewpoint of his relationship with god they said to him they indicted him we are not born of fornication it must have meant that uh your mother was pregnant when she was expecting you and she was not married to joseph that's an implication it's a proje- proje- project projection how will you meet that projection even if that projection is true how will you meet it you cannot overcome a projection that is addressed to yourself based upon a fact that is literal i failed and i am projected by the enemy with guilt in relationship to my failure i cannot deal with that projection based on paralogism i meaning i cannot say the reason why i did that is because i am a victim in life and i deserve some space i cannot deal with it that way i have to deal with it through analogism i which means what i have to consider jesus and what do i mean by saying considering jesus i have to reckon on the fact that the position that he has placed me in that is in my in my relationship with him i seated above is much greater than the experiences in which i find myself as i am down here if i think that way i will what i will increase in my capacity in terms of gaining understanding from god so i can come to the church and instead of being renewed in my mind instead of being quickened in my understanding i can actually get bombarded in the church with legalism and with guilt because i am not receiving the word of his grace i am only receiving the word of god but i am not receiving the word of god as the word of his grace you understand 
Now when I go to the dentist and he wants to clean my teeth, if he's just doing a little bit of scaling here and there, he doesn't have to inject me. But if he has to you know, do some kind of root canal or something, then he has to inject me. And when he does that, there is a num numbing what? sensation. And then there's a numbing sensation. And then the things are being cut here and there. You know when I know that something is wrong? When he asks me to spit in the basin. Then all the blood comes out and my, my lips are like heavy and I can't, you know. Uh, and when Dr. Sinu talks, <laughs> and, and then slowly after some time when you go home, the thing begins to wear out and the pain comes. You know? It's very important in our lives to be in that place where that kind of, that kind of effect is happening. Very often we we become very numb to the things that God wants to do to us. We are in an age where we don't want to feel pain, so we take prescription. We don't want to deal with these issues. You know, in some cases, you might need medication, but I'm just saying, there is a pill for every thrill. But God wants to do it the old-fashioned way where we are really wrestling in our lives. There is a wrestle, there is a between the flesh and there is that real battle that is going on in our lives. It is, what does it say in Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, what does it say? Is the word there War it comes into it, is it? What did it say, Pastor Benny? Okay, then? Is there a war going on? I thought we had independence since 1947. Guys that are living in carnality today are experiencing their independence. What independence? They are experiencing the independence of God. When you see a person who is carnal in the heart but has tremendous behavior on the outside, it's one of the most dangerous people you can find. Because that form of carnality is not based upon anything that is sensual. It's that form of carnality is rooted in iniquity, that's pride. The sins there are not sins of the flesh. They are the sins of the tongue. Romans chapter 3, 9 to 23 talk about 14 characteristics. All have to do with things done from the neck upwards. 14 things from the neck upwards. God is addressing. It's very difficult to conform to, to a behavior pattern when there are 14 things that God finds wrong with me from my neck So the best way is to come to a place and allow God to speak to me. That's what happened. That's what preaching is all about. I come into a local assembly and I'm just allowing God to speak to me through the man of God. Very simple. I take what he says. I, I, I receive it by faith. I mix faith with it. And I have and I develop a capacity to know God. That's it. The things that are in my life that God wants to deal with, He will deal with. <coughs> I don't have to strive to deal with those things. God will automatically deal with. Why? When the word comes in like a two-edged sword, it will deal with the things that God wants me to, de to deal with me. When I go into, a, in, into an operation theater, <coughs> the surgeon has to do surgery I mean, he cannot do anything un unless he first puts me to sleep. And then if it's th then he can do it. Otherwise, I will interfere with every possible move he makes. Right? <coughs> I think so. So, I don't need to come to God. I, I don't need to come to God. I am aware of my problem, 
but I don't have to come to God with the intention of dealing with my problem. Let me say it again. I don't have to come to God with the intention of dealing with my problem even though I know I have a problem. I need to come to God with the intention of being available to receive His provision. Once I receive it, I will be able to deal with the problem. Which means what? God may not address my problem this morning. But He has left me with a provision even though He has not addressed my what? Problem. Can you give me an example of that? Is the problem bread in Matthew 16 or is the problem leaven? Right? But Peter, Jesus Christ is addressing leaven. Peter is addressing bread. Jesus saying, bread already happened before because in 14 I multiplied it in John 6 and Matthew 14 I multiplied bread. People had more than enough. The issue is not bread. What is the issue? Huh? Leaven. There are times where God wants to address the problem but people are interested in the provision. What is it? God wants to address avarice in terms of excesses. People are thinking we don't have enough with our lives and God is saying It's not that you don't have enough, you have much more than you think you need. The rich young ruler came to Jesus with the intent of asking him what he must do to have eternal life. God said, you have too many possessions with you. Correct? Yes or no? He didn't come expecting to hear that statement. Sometimes the problem that I think I have as a believer that I want God to deal with is very necessary for me to have as a believer so that I can become broken before God. There is the possibility as a believer for God to deal with my problem in such a way by dealing with the problem, I can actually become independent of God. Or I can, it, can, it can cause me to be elevated in pride. And I say sometimes, God, if you only dealt with this situation, I'm telling you, I can serve you and I can run. God is saying, you will not run for me, you will run away from me. And so God, in some way, allows certain weaknesses to be in the believer so that in 11.34 what does it say there? of the book of Hebrews yeah it says that out of weakness made strong Yeah, verse 34, from weakness, for made, what, how? So if Timothy is thinking about quitting, God is saying, Timothy, I want you to know this out of weakness you can be made what strong where does that come from it comes from hearing it comes from hearing
today, the world wants to replace the hearing with doing. Person comes into the church, he hardly spends a year in Bible school, he gets a vision to start ministry. Okay. What second what does Second Timothy one seven say? First uh, Timothy one seven. What is it? First Timothy one seven. What is that word? Wanting to be teachers by the law, they need the what? What is that word? Understand. Same word, 2 Timothy 2 7. Consider what I say. Understand what I'm saying. But they don't have that understanding. They don't have that understanding. That understanding comes if they put themselves in a place where they can hear. Then when they don't have that in 2 Timothy 2.7, they don't consider that word no. Then when they, then, then when they go out and they are confronted with these situations, they don't have sunesis. They don't have sun together and imai to send. So they don't know how to put two and two things together so they come to the conclusion. So their evaluation of a situation is based purely on human reasoning. That is para logizomai. They have no capacity at that time to be a doer of the word. Because the doer of the word means practical obedience in relationship to what you have heard. Because they don't have it, they enter into paralogizomai, whereas Jesus Christ entered into analogizomai. He was able to endure the antilogia, the hostility that came to him as a result of what? His relationship with the one that he constantly was never detached from in terms of his hearing. So we get a few wisecracks, they come around the place, they're all stimulated, excited, they go through their emotions, God is calling me, they come here, they come into a place and then they basically, they're like one year and then God is calling me to do ministry. Some, you know, some, they have some gifts here and there and all that stuff and they think that if they can somehow, you know, get a, 100 cc amp or 100 like whatever amp and just that and they have the, all their gadgets all in place and they have their libraries together on the iPads and all that then they can go out and then they go out there and they, they go there and then they get paralyzed then they get angry with God, they get angry with the church they get angry with the pastor, they say no one was with me when I went out and all, what do you think happened to them? If Jesus Christ waited on his father for 33 years to do ministry, we can wait for three years, no? So they graduate after three years, then say, when am I getting ordained pastor? I don't like this license to preach, associate and... Can I just directly jump from graduation to ordination? Because assimilation of information is no criteria. Assimilation of information is not the end in itself. If the vessel has not been broken, then that information will make me quite a dangerous person. For Knowledge without love puffs up. No? So we have this, I mean, I, I don't know how the theme is going to go, but Paul is not writing to a guy who's on the ball and he's like, you know, ministering in flying colors and all. One thing that Timothy has, which is very important in his calling, 
in Philippians 2.20, it has the same soul structure as Paul. That is all that you need. That is isosukos, like-mindedness. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ, Philippians 2.5. We have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it is a result of being spiritual. In Philippians 2.5, it is a result of being, of having humility. In Ephesians 2.20, it is a result of submitting to a pastor teacher. What is it? In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it is a result of being spiritual. Philippians 2.20, it is a result of being under a pastor teacher. And in Philippians 2.5, it is a result of, of functioning in humility. If I function in humility, if I, uh, if I, I, I am under a pastor teacher, and if I purpose to be spiritual in my heart, if I have these three things, I'm in a very, I'm in a safe place with God. And Timothy is, he has these three things. He is spiritual, he has, he is under the pastor teacher, and he has humility in his life. And the Apostle Paul is saying, you don't really have to be too worried about all the other things because you have something that is important in your life as a person. That is why we don't train our people how to face difficulties when they go out on the field. There is no course in Bible college that teaches people how to face difficulties on the field. We train our people how to face God. When we train our people how to face God, that means how to stay in fellowship with Him, when they go out, they will know how to face the difficulties on the field. Yes, of course you can write a letter, call up the pastor, send an email. I'm not saying you can't do that. But that is not the course that we have here. I don't know, you may have, but we don't have that course. So someone that goes there doesn't call me and say, Pastor, what do you think I should do in Madras, Chennai? What do you think I should do in... No. You, you don't ask those questions. After two weeks, when things are going bad, you call up the pastor. Pastor, do you love me? The first of the month, the support doesn't come. Pastor, I'm here. No, those are all logistical things. God teaches us those things that the world cannot counsel us with. The world has no answers for. The world does not have counsel for. Those are the things that God teaches us. When we go out into the place, those questions and those things that the world doesn't have answers for, God teaches us and we give it and we communicate to them what they can never have answers for in this life. So this is a spiritual atmosphere the body of Christ is not a place where we are transacting commercially. Now we may have businesses and all, but this is a spiritual atmosphere. There is the work that is happening here is a completely different work than that is happening in a corporate sector. And although I may have some ideas and methods that I may bring here, the way this corp the, the way this spiritual entity operates is on another plane than what an, a, corp a, a corporate entity operates. There they have to have a particular kind of wisdom to be successful. Here God, God basically brings us into a place where we need to have a certain kind of foolishness to be spiritual. Imagine if the one tenth that you give the church and offerings and tithes, if that money you didn't put in the offering but you put in stocks and bonds, how much money would you basically have by now in stocks? The world says you're giving one tenth every month to your church. Put it in mutual funds. Sahi, sahi. Huh? So I start beginning to, when I start beginning to backslide in my life as a believer, I, I lose my convictions of my calling to a local church. I start beginning to adopt the methodology of the world. I cannot say like Lot, even though I'm in Sodom and Gomorrah, I am not like the Sodom and Gomorians. Even though I live there, I don't chew what they chew and would do what they do. We'll talk about it in the evening. 
I'm hungry. Meditate on this word. Set before. Okay. S E T. If you have time between now and the evening, you look it up and then we'll talk about it. What is it? I have now when when the theme says consider what I say. I cannot consider what I say unless I have said certain things before. When I'm hungry, what is the first thing that I do? Come home, may wash and wash my hands, go into the dining table, eat the food, and then I say, "Thank you, Jesus, for." supplying this food. I don't pray for the food to be blessed. I pray for the food to be digested. There are many Christians that are digestive in character that are looking for looking for God to deal with them in a digestive manner. Then deal with them in then then they are preoccupied with him in a what do you call that in with a, with a, with in terms of reverence and worship. talk about it when we have like you know consider what i say and the lord will give you in another way you can say if there are certain things that god has set before us then on our part we know what decisions we need to make in relationship to what god has said before us okay there is a conference from the 12th to the 16th in bangalore 12th to the 15th pastor shibeli is coming So Pastor John makes the announcement here and the and says that Pastor John uh, when are we booking our tickets right right suddenly people come to and says Pastor John when are we booking our tickets he'll say for what just booking our tickets God always places something before us in order for us to be in a place where we can make some decisions there is no place in the bible where decisions decisions are made before something is placed whether it is in the good sense or it is in the pastor benny said god placed before man there were many trees but he specifically pointed out two trees one veg one non veg simple he just placed something before them and man was told certain things about the tree and he had to make a decision between what in relationship to those trees it was something that was set before okay very simple when god knows i have this problem why is he putting things before my eyes right yes If you knew that there was a devil why did he allow him to come into all of it no no god is saying i am setting before you so number 1 definition number 2 determination between the definition and the determination there is something that the devil is looking at to take away from my heart in order to consider those things that god has set before me which are a prohibition what is it I come to the pastor and I say as a young person pastor I am having feelings towards another person pastor is excited finally I've been praying for this guy and then he says to the pastor but well, she is not a believer now the pastor has to go into extra intercession pastor doesn't say you're off you're, you're wrong this is like from hell is the pit no no he's not say he just like broke and now he says okay I have to intercede for this fellow why he is he is going for things that are set before him in a prohibitory manner It's a prohibition from God. No one is saying don't do it. It is just not so with that word set before look up also the word worthless. It's an amazing study when you consider that. I've been looking at it because I am as you grow older you are thinking you know our, our, our walk should be much deeper and then suddenly very subtly the enemy comes and you know that he places the evil things. He just places worthless things and when a person forgets that which is worthless there is something that happens we'll talk about in the evening uh, but it is something that really i mean he really robs god of something that is very dynamic in his personal life 
Like there is God that is wanting to give us something that is very, very close to his heart. Correct? As a gift to me. Right? Then there is me that wants something that is very far away from, the, from what God even wants to give me. That battle is constantly going on in our lives as believers on a daily basis. So Colossians 3 says, Therefore, I want you to set your... Huh? It doesn't mean to say, give, give away all the earthly things. He says, remember, there are some things that are set before you. They are prohibitory in nature. If you do not understand the things that I have prepared for you, then you will run after those things that are set before your eyes that are prohibitory in nature because those things that are prohibitory in nature I have not prepared for you. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. They were prepared for us before the foundations of the world. That is where sanctification and maturity comes into place in your discipleship and my discipleship as believers. We are not outgrown discipleship as pastors and leaders we are constantly entering into degrees of it and that is why the church has an opportunity to receive gems from the pulpit which the Holy Spirit is actually giving to the church as a result of the preparation that is taking place in the personal privacy of the man of God and as the body is also praying on their knees you know we are not here setting some worthless things before our eyes. We're not here. We are, there is something that God has set before us that is beyond human understanding. And that is what Jesus Christ in his humanity was trying to communicate to the disciples that there is something that is eternal in nature that was set before them. And once they comprehended that truth, their lives were never the same. Amen. Father, we thank you for this afternoon and bless the remainder of our day quicken us during these few days here to receive by faith the things that you have from every portion that is going to be expressed for the oneness in the body of christ for the joy for the excitement for the momentum for the passion that you have for people that are lost out there cause help us to you know just live in anticipation of something that you will do which is brand new from session to session from day to day in our lives in our personal lives in our families in our marriages in our callings in our secular work that we do in the body of Christ in the vision that you have for this ministry, the need for, for infrastructure, for a new place an office, a, possibly a permanent church building, for everything that is there, we are just looking to you with a tremendous sense of expectation, Father we pray, anoint bless, minister, edify Father, the body of Christ in these few days in a special way, in Jesus name we pray